dysfunctional vet here. What we have in this representation is the Earth. This C right here represents the center of the Earth. This star is up here. And if you remember, I said there's an imaginary thread that runs from the star to the center of the Earth. That represents this. This is where you're at right here. And you can see that star and you shoot an angle up to that star. You bring the star down to the horizon, you note the time. You do a little bit of math and you get this image right here. In this image, we still have our star. We have our line that comes down to the earth. This is your zenith. Now the line goes all the way to the earth but on the Earth, it, re it represents a specific point. And if you remember from navigation, where I talked about piloting, I said that if you know this location on the Earth, you can plot where you are by drawing a back azimuth, which in this case is a great circle. <laughs> in this case, it's half of a great circle, which follows down and it comes across where you're stationed right down here. This opposite point where it comes out is called the nadir. The zenith is directly above you. Your feet would be the nadir and on the opposite side of the earth was, would also be the nadir. Now this is a more astronomical term than it is a celestial term as far as navigation is concerned. Normally you say zenith nadir but in this case, the nadir's down here where the great circle comes around, exits the Earth on its path into infinity. The center of the Earth is still here. The line from the star is still here. But where it strikes the Earth is what we're getting longitude and latitude. And we're following that in a great circle. And we're charting our location there. Which now gives us... This location, or this, gives us this. We have our star. We have our longitude and latitude on the Earth. We have half of our great circle. <coughs> We've got the exit into infinity over here, which gives us this line bearing. Now, you remember what I told you in piloting, these line bearings tell you where you are in a bay or something like this. This is piloting using the entire globe as your points of reference. Over here we have Aries. We have our zenith, our nadir. Aries comes across. Again, the imaginary line goes to the center of the Earth. The half circle right here comes across where these two lines, <laughs> where these two lines intersect that is where you're located on the earth. Again, I'm not going to go into the math that's involved. If you remember in the hour angle, we had Greenwich and then we had these 15 degrees every so often until we get down to 180 and 15 degrees until we get back up to 360. These are what are used to determine where Aries is on the face of the earth. The star also uses an hour angle. It's very similar, slightly different. Very slightly different. And I'm not going to go into the math, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to explain what Noonan would have been doing. Now, let's take a look at the sky, and let's see exactly what... Um, now, let's take a look at the sky, and let's see what Amelia would have seen when she took off, and what she would have seen about the time she was landing on Howland... where she was headed to Howland Island. But let's take a look at what the sky would have looked at. Let's look at the stars and let's look at them in real time. This is going to be the actual night sky on June the 2nd, 1937, which is considered the date of her death, which is when her aircraft is going to land on an island far south of Howland Island. And you can see the sky from her location. All right, this is the sky on the morning of July the 2nd, 1937, 
and Amelia Earhart is getting ready to take off from uh, Lao, Papua New Guinea. This is the actual sky. Now we are looking to the north here. We can grab this down. I want to be able to see the direction so I can keep up with them. And we're going to scan all the way around the horizon and then we'll look at the uh, zenith here. Moving to the northeast. Moving to the northeast, you can see that we have the sun coming up here. Let's see what this is. That's nothing up there. Actually, it says this is an asteroid. Can't, I can't read it, it's uh, washed out. Here we're looking to the southeast. We're due south now. We're coming around. That's the southwest. We're looking at the west. And again, this is the sky on July the 2nd, 1937. Up to the northwest, and now we're back to the north. So this is the sky that she saw. Looking straight up above, we have the moon. It says that the moon is on uh, 0 degrees 46 minutes, 903 by declination of 10 degrees, 28 point. 010. Uh, distance from the observer is uh, 367977.4 kilometers and the apparent magnitude is negative uh, 11.6 which means it's pretty bright. On the morning as they're taking off they are able to get a good sun sight which is right here and they're also able to get this moon sight. So they're going to be able to establish a line of bearing all the way across. Now, let's uh, pause this and let's go to their landing location. We know that they've got a sun. I don't know that the cloud cover was all that good, but they could have still gotten a semi-decent um, sun sight unless the cloud cover was just really, really heavy. So let's look at the end of their flight. Alright, here is the sky. We're looking north again. I've shrunk it down as much as I can. This right up here is Arcturus. Right here we have Vega, which is a double star. These are all real good navigation stars. As we look to the east, down here on the horizon, we have Jupiter. By the way, the time is 6.41 p.m. on July the 3rd because they've crossed the international dateline. Right up here, we have Arcturus again, so that you've got your orientation. This right here is Antares. Moving around, southeast at the... South, straight down. We've got Rigel, right up here we have Spica, as we come around, we're now looking to the southwest, we have, it's, it's uh, E-L-E-N-I-N, Elenin, which is a comet, that's, that's not used for navigation, it just happens to be bright and easy to see. A-L-G-I-E-B-E, -E, which is double star, looking to the west. As we come around, we have some real bright stars here. Yeah, 
M I Z A R. It's a new one to me. And then Octurus is back. And we're coming back up to the north again. So this is the sky at 6:41 p.m. that Noonan had to navigate from. As you can see, he's got a lot of things to pick from. Now the moon isn't visible that I can see anywhere up here. I don't see the moon anywhere. That's okay, but he's got a lot of good stuff to pick from. Now, remember, they left on the 2nd, but when they crossed the international date line, it's the day after, right? So it's the 3rd. Yikers. All right, if you notice, we're on the 180th meridian. On the left-hand side, we have 2 July, and as we move to the right, flying east in our airplane, it becomes 1 July. All calculations on the right-hand side of the 180th parallel have to be done based on the 1st of July, hour angle, and the date. If you use the second, you're going to be really, really messed up. So, as you can see, so as you can see, it, it creates a bit of a problem. Now, I just showed you the night sky. Amelia Earhart says that she's flying on the correct meridian for the island, but she never gets there. So, now we're going to put all the pieces together and try to figure out what happened to cause her to become lost.